Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This one's gonna be a good one for both keyboardists and sound guys. Today, we're gonna talk about main stage. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. Uh, so the reason why I say this is important for sound guys is because um, I think it's important for a sound technician to understand at least a little bit about all the instruments that are happening on stage um, so that you can, one, help if something goes wrong, and two, you can provide um, useful feedback and criticism uh, when something could sound better or be changed one way or another to, uh, to better fit with what's going on with the band. Um, so today we're going to do a brief introduction to uh, MIDI and to main stage. Um, if that's a, um, a new concept to you and to your church, maybe you're looking at what your keyboard rig is going to look like, this could be a very important video for you. Um, so a real quick introduction as to what MIDI is. Um, MIDI is not audio. Um, we've got a little tiny MIDI keyboard here you can see on the screen. Um, this little guy, um, very affordable, it's about $100 when it was brand new. There's a new model of it now, you can see this one's been places and done things, gone around the world, had a lot of fun. Um, but these were $100, it doesn't make any sound. When I hit these keys, what it does is it sends a signal to the computer through USB, and it says, hey, I'm hitting this key, and I'm hitting it this hard. And then your program, in this case main stage, is going to say, okay, I see that you're hitting a C. Um, you've selected for that to be a drum kit, so I'm going to make that sound like a kick drum. Or, okay, now you've changed your patch, and now that's going to sound like middle C on a, um electric keyboard, or a trumpet, or, you know, um, some vulgar sound from a sound library. There's anything you can do with it. It's crazy the number of options. Um, so the idea of why you might want to do this is maybe instead of buying a $3,000 um, keyboard workstation that would be awesome, but uh, maybe overkill, uh, maybe it can't do that synth sound that you heard on the last uh, Hillsong Young and Free um, track or whatever it's going to be, this is a way for you to have a lot of flexibility and to kind of work your way into those sounds rather than buying a massively expensive keyboard in one go. So the keyboard itself, in this case, is $100. Um, you can buy bigger controllers. This one's got 25 keys. You can buy some for 49 or uh, 61 or 88 keys uh, for not that much more expensive. You can also take older keyboards, like a maybe you've got an old Casio lying around. Um, that the sounds aren't what you want for what you're doing, but the keys feel good, and there's a MIDI output or USB output. You can use that and hook up to your software and, um, and re regardless of what the, the keyboard itself sounds like, the signal coming out of the computer can be whatever you want it to be. So, keyboard's 100 bucks, the program is $30. The biggest expense you're gonna run into is um, buying the computer. Um, you have to have a Mac computer for main stage to work. Um, if you're like me, you've got a Mac anyway, so that's not a big deal. If you don't have a Mac at your church, you might want to weigh if that's worth the investment. Um, but for me, it's a really good deal. I've already got a Mac, $30 for software, and it's awesome. You're good to go. And then you can then add um, other software later on, um, such as Omnisphere, um, which is $500, or you can add other things that are cheaper. Um, I made it a point for many years to only use what came with MainStage just to show that I could and to, uh, to help churches to get sounds without having to... Uh, to buy anything extra. Uh, it's definitely doable if you spend the time and work with it. Um, it's just gonna be easier if you buy patches and then you can get, you know, like I said, Hillsong. Um, there's an awesome guy out there named Peter James um, who he does a lot of the tracks for those guys and he um, puts those uh, files online and you can use them and get the exact same sound from the album. So a lot of cool flexibility of things you can do with, you, uh, with MIDI. So let's take a quick look um, on our screen here. Um, I have opened up, this is, forgive me, this is an old version of main stage. I'm poor and haven't bought the upgrade yet, um, but it's gonna look very similar if you have the current version. Um, just gonna look a little bit prettier on what you've got. 
Um, so I've uh, told it to create a new session and we're going to start today with just one of the templates. What I want to show you is the basics of how all this works and um, some cool troubleshooting tips for you sound guys and keyboardists out there. So uh, we're going to select keyboard with patches. Let that load up. And it's telling me my hardware is not yet assigned. That's OK, because that's what I'm going to show you today. So we'll hit OK. And um, right away, I'm going to have some sound. And you've got a whole bank of uh, pre-made patches that you can try um, so you're not doing anything from scratch. So you can see we've got pianos, electric pianos, organs, all kinds of fun stuff, even some basses, synthesizers, all kinds of cool stuff. So today we're going to take a look at um, probably the electric piano the most. So what I want to show you is if you notice on the screen here, you've got some different knobs um, and a little keyboard and a sustain pedal, all the stuff that we have plugged in today. And this is what's controlling our sound. Um, so as you're going, you can make these do pretty much anything you want. But um, for example, there's a reverb on here. As I turn that up. So you can control things in real time as you're going, and uh, and it could be anything. It could be reverb. It could be that you've layered in a piano and a pad, and you want to turn the pad up and down. The possibilities are honestly endless on this program, so it's really cool. So what I want to show you today is how you link your physical keyboard in the real world to main stage, and how exactly that all connects together. Um, and so there's. Being that it's MIDI, which is a programming language that's been around for a few decades now, there's some holdovers from previous ways that you would program things that can trip you up in this program. Um, so what I want to show you is how that connects and, um, and what I've found is the best way to get started. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you the layout menu. Um, so if you look over here in your top left-hand corner, there's a layout. And this is showing you what your main stage layout looks like. It's like PowerPoint. You can grab things and you can move them around. You can resize things. You can uh, add um, all these different buttons and such down here. A lot of cool options. Um, so as I play, if you notice, if you can see this on your screen, the little keys are moving up and down. So the keyboard's already patched, but I'm going to start from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all. So on my keyboard, I'm going to hit Command A. You see everything's selected. And what I want to do is I don't want to have any baggage. Um, I'm going to erase everything as far as its MIDI control. And then we're going to just really quickly um, show you how easy it is to patch in this little keyboard. And you can do it with any keyboard you've got that, as long as it has MIDI. So got everything selected. Over here on my screen control inspector, um, I'm going to tell everything to be going to all and unassigned. So device all, channel unassigned, just to get started. So now I no longer have any control. If I play my keys, the little keyboard isn't going. Um, if you can see this on your screen, there is a little MIDI map up here, a little uh, meter. Um, so I do see that I am getting, when I play the keys and move knobs, things are being sent to main stage. They're just not going anywhere yet, which is what I want. So what I'm going to do now is called learn mode. Um, I'm going to select the keyboard and I'm going to hit Command L, L for learn. And if you notice, it turned red. And so now, as I play the keyboard, it's seeing it again, and it has properly uh, addressed it to come from my MPK Mini, that's my little keyboard here, and Channel 1. And the reason why I started from scratch, not to get too far into how MIDI works, um, but if I hadn't done that, it would have said Channel 1 through 16, and um, that would mean that my keyboard would accidentally be triggered by my drum pads as well. Those are coming down channel 10. You don't need to worry about this right now. I just want you to know um, by doing what I just did, erasing all the mappings and then learning the keyboard again, it guarantees that when I hit the drum pads, they're not going to make the keyboard make sound because I don't want to use it for that. I'm using it for a different purpose. So real quick, so we got the keys loaded in. I'm going to click my sustain pedal, and this 
particular keyboard has a little sustain button instead of a pedal. Now I'm going to go to my knobs and I'm going to just twist each one of them both ways up and down and go up and down the list here. You can see it's very quick and easy. So I'm just going down the list, turning all this up and down. All right. And then these uh, set and patch controls down here, I'm going to uh, program those to my first and last uh, drum pads here. So the first one, second one, and then my patch, keep accidentally clicking out. And then finally, and again, I'm flying through this to keep the video short. I'm going to show you how you can very easily add elements. So I've got four drum pads so that currently don't have a uh, assignment on the screen. So I'm going to take some buttons, drag them up on here. I don't really need to see this bottom info. So I'm going to get rid of that, resize it a little bit, do a little copy and paste action here. And then assign those again, command L. All right, oops. Okay. Great, and now I'm gonna go back to my edit screen. And so um, those things are now uh, affecting what I have on here. So for example, if we take a look at my, uh, my electric p key, uh, piano here, excuse me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the plugin. This is what's going on in the background that's creating sound. I want you to look at um, two things here. Um, one, I've got my physical knob, my top left knob here. Uh, in the virtual world, that is going to this knob here. And then this knob is affecting on the plugin, this knob here. So as I turn one of those up, you can see they're all being affected. Now, that might sound confusing. Why is one knob affecting one knob, which is affecting one knob? This is one of the beautiful things about main stage. Rather than having, in the way they designed this, rather than having this one knob affect directly the drive control, which you can hear on here. It's pretty cool. Rather than having that physical knob go directly to that drive control, um, let's say that we had done that. We use these eight knobs here and we programmed in, say, 10 different patches. And then it's uh, five minutes before worship's about to start and someone spills um, a cup of water on your keyboard and it is gone. Um, but you've got another keyboard there, so you're gonna, you're gonna program that guy in. Well, you've got five minutes. You can't go through uh, eight knobs across 10 patches. You can't do 80 patch changes in five minutes and expect it to all work right but that's not how main stage works. Um, you've got these layers. So because this knob is affecting my layout knob, um, I can go through and if that were to happen with my keyboard, just as quickly as I programmed in this keyboard, I could do another one. Because all I'm doing is I'm setting the link between my physical world and my layout, but the layout is what affects um, the, uh, the knobs and all the plugins for each patch. Um, so that saves you a ton of time if anything ever goes wrong. Um, so pretty genius the way that's set. So now that's on there, um, you can see, I'm gonna just close this for a moment. Uh, all my controls are working. So I've got my drive. I've got bell volume. Tremolo. If you're, if you're listening to this uh, on headphones or anything that's got stereo, you'll hear that. Chorus, reverb, delay, <laughs> and then a global EQ. So this guy will affect your entire mix. So really cool. And uh, oh, and then going back to our uh, patches, 
Um, so these guys on the left are now, if you look over my patch list, they will jump entire um, banks of patches. And then um, the, the guys on the right are gonna go um, just individual patches. Very cool. And this is just what I've done in about five minutes here. You can go through and set these controls to be anything you want. For example, if I wanted this first knob here to instead of being my drive, let's say I want it to be my volume. Um, that's again, real easy. I'm gonna click on, I'm in the edit mode. I'm gonna click on this knob, Command L for learn. You see it turned red. And then I'm gonna click what I want that to go to, which is going to be uh, this fader. Command L so I can get out of there. And now, just like that. So I know this is a new thing for a lot of you. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment below on our YouTube page um, or suggestions as long as they are uh, friendly and building up the people that are watching this show. Um, but this uh, Tech Tuesday is made for you, for the church. Um, so if you have any questions or certain videos you'd like me to cover, please feel free to, uh, to comment below or you can email me at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. And we want to make sure this is something that's useful for you and for your church. Until next week, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.